this chapter, we will learn about quality management, what it is, what quality is, and how it relates to manufacturing and service. We will also learn about important factors that are going to impact and affect the quality in an organization. Then we will also talk about TQM, the Total Quality Management, and Six Sigma, and also some tools that uh, organizations use to identify uh, the factors and also room for improvement and how to improve it. Hope that uh, you enjoy in the, this chapter. The learning objectives for this chapter are as follows. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to define the term quality, what it means and how it relates to products and services. You will be able to identify the determinants and important factors of quality for products and services. You will know how to describe TQM, the total quality management, how it works and the process for that. You will learn how to discuss quality certification and what certification and awards for, for quality and their importance for organizations. Also, you will learn about process improvement and about Six Sigma and uh, how it works and its proce procedures. And also you will learn about some quality tools, various tools that are used uh, for improving quality, identifying the factors in quality and improve it, or uh, when a, a process or an operation is out of um, control or not acceptable quality wise. One of the main questions that you need to learn here is the definition of quality. What is quality? So please pause and try to answer this question at your best no, with your best knowledge. Quality and quality management. What is quality? Quality is the ability of a product or service to consistently meet or exceed customer expectations. So it's mainly about customer expectations. For a decade or so, quality was an important factor in businesses and organizations. But after a while, this emphasis began to fade away. But there has been a resurgent um, in paying attention to quality because of the recent experiences and news that have been we heard about, uh, mainly because of the adverse attention to bad quality products. For example, um, auto recalls for Toyota, GM, Ford, you name it. Toys, toys that have been hazardous and have been thinking that they might actually cause um, this sickness or even death um, to kids. Phones, for example, if you remember the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, which got fired several occasions. Dog food, pharmaceuticals, especially pharmaceuticals, there have been a lot of examples of that. You can see it almost every year that there is a recall and claim. So because of these, um, and also because of the competition in the market, there, there are different companies that they produce a product and they want to uh, gain the market. So one way to gain the market is by ex meeting the expectation of the customer. So quality is an important way to do that, to um, absorb customers, to retain customers, to catch customers attention and uh, gain part of the market. So this is what we want to study in this chapter. We want to study quality, how it relates to products and services, how, how is it different, and also how quality management works and what are the tools that organization can use. Let's start with quality of products. What are the dimensions for product quality? Or how do you as a customer judge the quality of product? What are the important characteristics 
of a product that you would call that product high quality. So try to think about this before you move on. There are certain characteristics or criteria for a product for the customers to call it a high quality product. These are called the dimensions of product quality. One of them is performance. You want to have a, a product is called a high quality product when it has a high performance. That means that this is one of the, the main characteristics of the product to have to perform well, to perform in an expected manner. Uh, another one is aesthetics, how it actually looks, the appearance, the feeling, the smell, the taste of a product, depending on what product it is. So that's also another dimension of quality that customer would judge a product based on that. Another feature is the special features, um, for example, extra characteristics for a product. Uh, right now, if you if you have on a, a Samsung, for example, phone, uh, starting with Galaxy S5, I guess, they started to add uh, a new feature on the phone, which probably a lot of people don't even use it. And that's actually the heart rate beat. So it's going to uh, measure the heart rate, your heart rate. Um, iPhone, for example, doesn't have that. So that's the... That's something that you wouldn't really expect from a smartphone to have, but this extra feature might actually make the product more appealing to uh, other customers. Another dimension for product quality is conformance. That's how well the product conforms to design specifications. Another criteria is reliability how reliable the product is or the, the consistency of performance. It, it's not just it has to perform well, it has to perform well, it has to maintain the consistency of performing well. Durability is the next one, and that's of course important. That's the, the useful life of the product. Uh, no matter how good of a performance product it is or how aesthetic and beautiful it is, uh, you expect that product to do to have a durability to actually last long um, so that's a, uh, a, a very important dimension the next dimension is the perceived quality so that's the indirect evaluation of quality right so note that it's not the designer or the producer of the product that that can they, they judge to be the, the last judge to judge the quality of product it's actually the customers. So perceived quality, which is done by customers, is going to be very important. So it's it's very important for uh, the producer, the designer, the manufacturer to know what the customer perceive from their, their product. So, for example, using surveys or etc. Any other tool, feedbacks to get the feedbacks to see whether their definition. An intention of quality is the same as the customer want. The next dimension is serviceability. So any product that almost you, you, you use and you purchase, especially if it's going to be electronic, for example, and it's going to last long, at some point you're going to need actually some service. So the serviceability of that producer and manufacturer is going to count for you as an important factor and dimension for the product quality. It is going to handle the complaints or reports, reapers or any other types of complaints from the customer. And next is consistency. That should be quality should not vary between the product or between its performance. So if you if you purchase a product and and it's a good quality, you, you like it, and you want to purchase one, for example, for your dad, your mom, your sister or brother. Um, so you would expect to have the, the same quality. So it has to be consistent. So these are the uh, dimensions of product quality. How about service quality? What do you think are the judgment, the criteria to judge the uh, the quality of a service. How do customer? How do you, as a customer, would judge the quality of service? What do you think 
and how do you think that's going to be different from the product so try to answer this question and think about this question before you move on for service the quality of service can be described and judged by these criteria. Convenience, that's the availability and accessibility of the service. Usually the facility that you go get the service. You want it to be convenience. And also the way that you receive the service, you want it to be convenience. Next is reliability. A service quality, a quality service must be reliable. That's the ability for that organization that provide the service to perform uh, the service dependably consistently and accurately so that you know it as a reliable uh, service another dimension to service quality is responsiveness that's the willingness to help customers in unusual situations and to deal with problems uh, in unusual situations so the, the organization who provide the service must be responsive. That's how you expect uh, a customer would expect a quality service to be. The timing is also important, the speed with which you receive the service. So especially if customers are impatient, which is nowadays everyone is impatient. Uh, assurance is the next dimension. That's the, the knowledge exhibited by the personnel who provide the service and the ability to convey the trust and confidence and make the, actually the, the customers who are coming for service um, reliability and assurance for that. Courtesy is the next one. So courtesy is how, how the uh, service members would actually treat uh, customers and how how you are actually being treated that's very important of course tangibility that's the the physical appearance of the facility how when when you walk in for a service you want it to be aesthetic for example convenient you want it to be if it looks good if you feels good if you like it the the service uh, space that you are in or service facility you, that's it's going to make an, a positive impact on your perception of the service provider consistency the ability to provide the same level of good quality repeatedly so when you go for a service and you found it to be high quality it has to be the same next time and next time and next time that you go to still keep uh, the same level of uh, quality that you have experienced already also the expectancy that's the meeting or exceeding what you as a customer would expect from uh, a service provider provider so as you see here there is a little bit different uh, dimensions to quality for product and services Responsibility for quality. Consider a manufacturing or a service uh, facility or service organization. Let's just start with a production manufacturing facility that produce a product. What part of this organization do you think is responsible for quality? Of course, top management, the, the managers are responsible for uh, quality these are the people who make the final decision regarding any anything in the organization including the quality the design department or design people those are the people who make the the, the design they're designing the product and one of the dimension if you remember for a product quality the quality of product is the design so the design department or design people are responsible for quality. Who else do you think is responsible for quality? Well, if it's a product, then product is going to be made out of material. So 
the material that you purchase need to be high quality. So the procurement department that they purchase the product, the raw material, they need to be responsible. They are responsible for quality of product. Who else on what part of the manufacturing do you think is responsible for quality? The production and operation process, the whole production operation process, which is going to be a chain of operations. Every product is going to be responsible for the quality. And after the product is finished, the quality assurance, the quality department, department has to make sure that the final product is as it should be. It should work as it should be. It should look as it should be. So the quality assurance and the packaging and shipping, they have to make sure that the product is not going to go broken. It's not going to actually uh, be spoiled or destroyed or break or go under any types of damage. So they are also responsible for quality. The marketing and sales, these are the people who have to work with the customers and they realize the expectation of the customer and also they have to convey uh, the dimensions of the quality of the product that they have produced. So as you see here, a lot of all, almost all part of an organization of production manufacturing is responsible for quality. From the very beginning that they purchase the materials, the raw materials, up to very end that they actually uh, produce the final product, they package it and they ship it. Not only that, after the product is actually received by the customer, the customer service is also responsible for the quality for product. So everyone in the organization has some responsibility for quality, but certain areas of the organization are involved in activities that make them key areas of responsibility. For example, the design. So no matter how the, the rest of these processes work, if the design, they have actually haven't designed a fine, a high quality design, it's going to be a fail, the final product or the raw material, the procurement, no matter how the rest of this work, it's going to be uh, make it big impact. To acknowledge quality of products for organization and companies, there are certain awards that are given uh, by different institutions. There is the Baldrige Award, which is given by the US government to recognize quality and excellence of uh, US companies. And there is the European Quality Award. And there is the Deming Prize, which is a quality award from the Japanese, a Japanese one, um, that is actually named after uh, Edward Deming, who was American and has contributed a lot in the quality revolution of uh, manufacturing and service in uh, Japan manufacturing. Besides the award, the quality award that we talked about, there are quality certification, mainly from the International Organization for Standardization or ISO, including the ISO 9000, which sets of international standards on quality management and quality assurance, the critical to international businesses, and the ISO 14000, which is a set of international standards for assessing a company's environmental performance. And there is the ISO 24700, which is, pertains to the quality and performance of office equipment that contains reused components.